So something I've been doing recently is diving back into old movies and TV shows that I watched growing up, and I wanted to see the lessons that they were teaching me about things like life and love. And one of my favorite movies of all time was Empire Records. I used to watch that movie all the time, but I just rewatched it the other day, and I don't know if it's necessarily teaching us the right lessons about love. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and it is designed for anybody who wants to improve their mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, in this video I'm going to be talking a little bit about Empire Records, but before, before I do that, did you know that I, I just launched my website, therewiredsoul.com. I know I've been having it up forever, but it just went up. I'm trying to do daily blogs, so go check it out. It's linked down in the description. I'll put in the pinned comment as well. All right, but yeah, anyways, Empire Records. So I just watched it again the other night. I watched this movie like probably over a hundred times growing up. And first, let's do a little synopsis real quick. There's a bunch of characters in Empire Records, but I'm gonna be specifically talking about the relationship between AJ and Corey, okay? So quick little rundown. All right, so at the beginning of the movie, we see that AJ clearly is in love with Corey and he goes to Joe to ask him for some advice and say, yo, Joe, you know, I'm in love with Corey. How do I tell her? You know, and Joe's handling his own thing with Lucas and Joe's like, just tell her I love you. And then AJ is like pushing it off. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna do it by 137. I'm, 137, I'm gonna tell Corey that I love him. I love her, right? And basically, you see Corey's perspective and Rex Manning's coming in. This is her celebrity crush since she was a child. She goes and she flirts with him. She wants to lose her virginity to him. Goes south. Anyways, she runs upstairs. AJ's up there. She's a mess. She's a wreck. She's crying. And AJ tells her at that point, that he loves her, right? And she's like freaking out, still caught up in her head, and then AJ gets pissed, he goes away. Later on, Corey tries to come back and apologize and talk to him, he doesn't want anything to do with it. Movie goes on a bit. We find out that Corey is addicted to um, speed, which is like methamphetamines, and by the end of the movie, you know, Corey goes up there, she talks to AJ, and Corey's going off to college and AJ, he decides that he's gonna go to art school by her and they're gonna be in love and all that good stuff. All right, quick little rundown. If you wanna watch the movie, go watch it. It's actually over on Netflix, okay? So yeah, I wanna talk about this relationship, things that we were taught and maybe some things that you can relate to when it comes to getting in relationships and good and bad ideas. First thing I wanna to touch on though real quick is like, have you ever rewatched a movie that you loved as a kid but you watched it as an adult and you're like, that was really weird, all right? So I want to, <laughs> real quick, like there was two really weird parts of that movie, okay? Like it's a gigantic record store and there was a part where like AJ, after he was upset at, at Corey, he like turns on Rex Manning and then it turns into like this huge like dance party in the record store and then him and Deb, they start like getting freaky in the middle of the freaking uh, <laughs> the store and I'm like what the hell is going on and it was just maybe a couple scenes later where Corey gets pissed off at Gina and she runs outside and like jacks up like the uh, Rex Manning like cardboard cutout and I'm just sitting there thinking I'm like if this was real life like there was probably the same customers in that store who saw both of these scenarios go down and that is absolutely maddening, all right? And then you take into consideration the other things like, you know, when Warren came back and, you know, shot up the place. But anyways, anyways. So yeah, let's talk about this. So let's talk about, you know, AJ, okay? So AJ, he had this infatuation with Corey. He loved Corey and they worked together. By the way, this is extremely common. This is something common that I've, I've, I've seen just throughout my years and my work history, I see a lot of people fall for the person that they work with. And it makes sense, it makes sense, but it's a no-no, all right? Some of you saw the video I did on The Office the other day, but here's the thing, like, I just like to sit back and look at this thing logically, okay? So when we're working at any type of office or store or whatever, we spend most of our day there, right? Eight, nine hours, unless you're working part-time, okay? So 
the people you're spending the most time with, you get the closest to. So I think it's common for people to become attracted to someone in the workplace and think that that's a good idea. And it is almost never a good idea. I know a few people where that has worked out, but it is, it is often a bad idea from my experience to try to date somebody in your workplace. Because here's the thing, when you're going after that, when you're going after that relationship, it all sounds like in your head, like, oh my God, we're gonna fall in love and everything's gonna be amazing. Like when we fall in love or we have intense feelings for somebody, we don't think of any of the negative. We don't think of any of the negative possibilities. And yeah, like, I guess it's kind of like pessimistic to go into any relationship with like a negative outlook on it. And why would you even get with that person if you had a negative outlook? But here's the reality of it. Like, especially at that age where, you know, the, the, the cast of Empire Records was, like teenagers, really, like you gotta figure, like things have a good chance of going south. Like if you looked at the percentage, right, there's probably a really high percentage that things are gonna go south and then you work with that person. Now you work with that person, right? Like have any of you, any of you watching this, have you ever dated somebody at the office and then you guys broke up. And let me know if that became awkward or weird or strange or one of you actually had to leave the job because of this, because that is one of the reasons why you don't date somebody at work. But again, like I understand where that attraction grows because you're spending so much time with them, all right? So anyways, yeah, AJ, he like, you know, draws pictures of her. Obviously he's in love with her and everything like that. Well, Corey, she has this thing for Rex Manning, okay? And when she goes up there and she's completely distraught, it's right after, you know, whatever went down with Rex Manning. That was also a really weird scene, by the way. But anyways, the first thing that I want to talk about, when she goes up there and she um, tells AJ what just happened and she's like sobbing and in tears and stuff like that, like you can really see the selfishness in that scene because AJ, so... When we talk about love, when we talk about being with somebody, like I stayed single for so, 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 so long because I realized how selfish and self-centered I was. All I thought about was me and it was not fair to any other partner. That's why I often recommend people, like if you're struggling with mental health issues, like don't date until you get kind of your act together, right? And, and you see in that, like AJ, if he truly loved her, if like, if this was a healthy love, when she came up there, and I know he had a set in his head to tell her that he loved her, but when she came up there, like she was clearly crying and everything, and he's like, no, I'm gonna tell her that I love her right now while she's crying and sobbing. It's like, no, 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 no. In that situation, AJ should drop what he's doing and say, yo, what's wrong? What's going on? You know what I mean? And talk with her about it, rather than succumbing to his own selfish needs of, I need to tell her that I love her, okay? And AJ ends up getting pissed, obviously, and there's something else like about these relationships, like AJ gets pissed that she threw herself at Rex Manning, right? Part of it was he was pissed that she didn't reciprocate his love right then and there, but that's something else. That's a whole nother video thing, and maybe I'll talk about it when I start talking about friends, where Ross is like, we were on a break, but just that, that kind of jealousy when you're not even together, you know what I mean? but it seems like this justified jealousy because you have such strong feelings. But the reality is when you're not together, that person is free to literally do whatever the hell they want, all right? So as the movie goes on and Gina and Corey get into this argument, we find out that Corey is addicted to um, methamphetamines, right? Like she is, or just amphetamines, maybe I think it was just amphetamines, but She's addicted to those and she uses them with the, you know, with the excuse that, you know, she has to study and things like that. And, and this is very common, by the way. Many college students become addicted to like things like uh, ADHD medications, like Adderall, Ritalin, things like that, just so they can study, just so they can cram because they wanna, they wanna get good grades or they wanna get into the best school or whatever it is. But we find out that Corey clearly has a problem with that. So in the final scene where they, they come together, where they come together, like, this is just one of the things that I, I, I noticed, like, as an adult now, looking back on these movies, and this idea of love, right? So, 
one of the things is that AJ says he's gonna move to another state just to be near Corey, right? He's gonna leave everything behind and just be near her. Like, this is often such a bad idea, right? When we, when we sacrifice everything, especially at that age, like I really wanna talk about like that age, before the, pre, the good old prefrontal cortex, the logical brain fully develops, like it's such a bad idea to drop everything and move there. Like, when I went up to college with my friend, one of the reasons that he went up there too was, to chase after his high school sweetheart and that went south real quick because she got to college maybe that's an entirely new video idea she got to college and she saw all of the other options she had and she started cheating on him and i'm not saying this is what always happens but we really got to think through before we're going to move somewhere for somebody else this is something that happens a lot though even with adults is that i've seen this countless times countless countless times and i almost got into that situation myself many times where we have this like early kind of like honeymoon phase love and we're willing to do anything for them. We'll move for them, we'll go anywhere with them, you know, we'll let them move in with us or we'll move in with them or whatever it is in that very early stage. And from my experience, what I've learned, like the test of a relationship isn't what it looks like when everything's at its best. The true test of a relationship is how things are handled when they're at their worst right? Like that is the true test of the relationship. I've seen so many relationships fail that were seemingly just the perfect relationship, but the second, the second either conflict happened or like stress, like external stresses, maybe somebody had like family problems or friend problems or work problems or something like that. And, and the two people were not ready to be there for one another in that situation. And then pff, they break it off. So that is one of the reasons why like so early on in a relationship, making the decision to move, like to be closer to somebody or move in with somebody, it's such a bad idea, right? Like we waited two years before we moved in together, okay? And, and before that, I think the only other girlfriend I lived with we were together for quite some time before we moved in. But that, that relationship was a hot mess anyways. The last thing I wanna touch on is people, people who date other people who are in active drug addiction. Like I'm a recovering drug addict, for those of you who, you, who didn't get the memo. Like I am in recovery and I know that people can get sober, I know people can get clean, but to date somebody, to start dating somebody in their active addiction is the worst thing that you can do. It is the absolute worst thing that you can do. And something that was completely neglected was like AJ found out that Corey was addicted to drugs and then he's like, okay, I'm gonna move across the country for you. Like, what, dude? What? Like, I'm not saying Corey is a bad person in that situation. She's a sick person who is struggling with an addiction, but like, that is, that is either A, neglecting the drug addiction, or B, this type of savior behavior. But we see people do this, pff, hell, I'll use my, my own experience. I had plenty of women date me knowing damn well that I was a hot mess. I was an alcoholic, I was a drug addict. There are some videos I've done in the past on codependency. Some people were dating me just because they wanted to fix me or just because they wanted to help me and things like that. And like, it wasn't fair of me to even allow them to date me, but like these things, they, they do not end well. Like I, I was telling, uh, I was telling uh, Tristan after we were watching the movie, like, one thing that they don't show you in these like romance these uh, romance movies like is what happened like a week or two later right or a month later or three months later right because I guarantee if you saw AJ and Corey's relationship a month or two later it would be a hot mess I would imagine things like AJ buying her drugs or fights happening all the time you know what I mean especially with the amount of um, effort that Corey's putting into school. That's a whole nother topic, right? Like AJ's moving over there and you know how Corey is about school. Like Corey really doesn't have the time for a relationship, you know, unless she gets through that whole thing and there's some talk about her dad and the pressure he puts on her and everything like that. But anyways, like I, I'm, I really want to look back at a lot of TV shows and movies and what they kind of teach us about love because like I mentioned in one of my other videos uh, announcing that I was going to be covering movies and TV shows was that I was raised by TV and movies. They taught me about what love looks like and in most cases, in most cases, they're unhealthy or unrealistic or both. 
You know what I mean? So if you have any examples of movies and TV shows that you think show examples of unhealthy or unrealistic love that you want me to check out and maybe do some uh, videos on, let me know down in the comments below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And don't forget, down below, brand new website, brand new blog post. I'm trying to do it daily. Make sure you check those out, all right? So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell. Huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. And if you would like to help support the channel and get some exclusive perks, benefits, get involved in our Q&A, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.